you're like me, you like to have a guitar with you when you travel. Um, some many years ago, my Bohemian youth, I took this 1980s vintage Martin backpacker guitar through a cycling trip through Europe. Um, abused the heck out of it, but I still love it. I keep it in my pop-up camper to go camping with the kids. It's got a big crack down the side of it, and the bridge is all collapsed on it. It still looks okay. It still plays just fine. Wow, check out that sweet early 90s jacket. The Martin guitar is packed in a, the pannier on the back of the bike, and yes, strapped to the top tube, is a vintage cassette player waterproof Walkman. Um, but since then, I've always wanted to have a guitar with me when I travel, and actually the first guitar I ever built was a do-it-yourself travel guitar. Um, I played around with different designs of how to detach the necks and things so I could build things that would fit into suitcases. Um, and I got pretty good at it and I came up with something I think might be a helpful design for folks. I'm gonna walk you through those things. But the first question you wanna ask yourself is do you really need a travel guitar? Um, we uh, guitar players have been blessed by the federal government in this regards and that there are laws and statutes that protect you in taking a guitar with you on an airplane. So right now, after I learned all this back in 2012, my travel, my go-to travel guitar is actually this guy. I like to take a full-size guitar with me now, and I made a video about this guitar, which is a do-it-yourself um, version of the Fender um, Acoustasonic guitar. But if you uh, take it in a small gig bag, they cannot deny you taking a full-size guitar onto an airplane as long as you're meeting their standard requirements. So I will quote from you from this piece of paper I keep in my gig bag when I'm traveling. Um, article, I think it's article, it's that little hurricane sign. I'm not a lawyer, I don't read, uh, I don't read law books and stuff. And uh, I'm gonna need my glasses for this because I'm getting old. But from uh, the FAA Modernization and Reform Act of 2012, Article, I think article, 41724, regarding musical instruments. Section A in general. Number one, small, instru small instruments as carry-on baggage. An air carrier providing air transportation shall permit a passenger to carry a violin, guitar, or other musical instrument in the aircraft cabin without charging the passenger a fee in addition to any standard fee that carrier may require for comparable carry-on baggage if, the big ifs, the instrument can be stowed safely in a suitable baggage compartment in the aircraft cabin or under a passenger seat in accordance with the requirements for carriage of carry-on baggage or cargo established by the administrator and B, there is space for such stowage, stowage at the time the passenger boards the aircraft. There's additional paperwork called the final ruling on this uh, code that states that if you get on the plane in time in front of everybody else, and if you can get your guitar in a luggage compartment, they can't make you take it out of it in order to make room for other people's garbage. <laughs> baggage. It's technically garbage to you, but other people's baggage. So the point is, um, if you really love traveling with a guitar, Rather than maybe spending all the time building a do-it-yourself storage guitar that fits in a luggage compartment, just take an old guitar with you and throw it in the, in the luggage compartment. That being said, I'm gonna start showing you uh, some of my other guitars and see if there's anything else that you can take from this video. Thanks for watching. So this is the first edition of a travel guitar I ever built in my um, father-in-law's workshop in uh, Western Vermont uh, while I was there on vacation. And, um, the idea behind this guitar was something that could be disassembled and fit into a regular overhead uh, uh, baggage piece. And um, I made it simply out of three by one oak pieces uh, sourced from a local Home Depot or something uh, and a standard uh, Telecaster replacement neck. Um, I did chop off the end of the headstock because the headstock was that extra two or three inches when you're trying to fit the neck into the diagonal space of a um, baggage, it was a little too long. So I just took the straight inline six uh, tuners and wrapped them around the other side. So they tune a little bit funny, but you get kind of used to that. Um, 
the original design, instead of these exploded, uh, these wood pegs that held these apart, I actually had threaded rods with connectors so I could spin the threaded rod connectors down and remove the uh, top and bottom bows. Um, since then, I've rebuilt the guitar. I don't use it as a travel guitar anymore. And I just used oak dowels and plugged them in uh, and glued it up. So it's now just kind of a funky um, practice guitar. It's really nice and lightweight. And I like this, but I did actually put this up for sale recently. So we'll see if I, I still have it in a while. Now, um, the middle section of the guitar uh, is just, like I said, one by three oak. Um, and it's two layers of oak. I don't know if you can see that. So there's two layers glued together. And the easy, the cool part about this is that when creating the neck pocket of the guitar, um, the dimensions work out pretty nicely by standard stock one by three lumber that um, just by uh, making a shorter and a longer piece and, and uh, carving out a bit of a curved neck pocket, you can make a nice neck pocket just by uh, gluing uh, the, the then the full size body together. Uh, I don't know if that made sense at all. Anyway, um, the bows actually are just a single uh, thickness of the one by three uh, wood and then shaped to the specifications and sizes of a Stratocaster body. So one of my frustrating things about carrying around the uh, backpacker guitar, not only the fact that it was acoustic and it wasn't electric, is that um, you always had to wear a strap to play it. So that's that's kind of a limitation of travel guitars if you're wanting to be super small. And then now, you know, all these uh, designs of Travel guitars nowadays have um, uh, different ways where they create uh, areas to lay on your leg and things like this. But the nice thing about this is that it plays and feels just like a normal size body. You get the connection with uh, your chest as well as your leg, and it's really comfortable and it plays pretty nice. Um, the electronics uh, were super simple. It's just a simple single uh, humbucker, and before I glued the top piece onto the bottom piece, I routed or put a, a channel right down the middle to go to an end pin jack. Uh, didn't bother with any electronics like a volume or a tone control. Didn't need it. Um, the idea for, you know, travel guitar is I'm not plugging into an amp. I'm plugging into a head flown amplifier or something like that. Um, made it super simple. Just a, a regular uh, Stratocaster tile, a uh, hard hardtail um, bridge. And that's it. Really simple. Now the bridge uh, or the neck connection has been modified a couple times since I originally did it. Um, I played around with different versions. Now it's just a standard screw and neck. Um, I played around with different versions of how to attach a neck to a body and detach a neck for a body. This original version, this big hole that's in the middle of the neck plate here was a single bolt that was fixed to a, a hollowed, uh, it was a carriage bolt that the end of the bolt was in a hollow underneath another brick uh, neck plate routed out of the back of the neck. And then there was a single bolt that came through and then I would tension it and put it all together that way. And it left this big protruding um, bolt out of the neck. Now it didn't turn out to be the best way to do it. I, had, I came up with a better design later that I'll show you on my other guitar. But um, yeah, there's, a, there's one idea. So when I would take it apart, uh, I would take a capo or something to hold the strings on, undo the neck, unpop, pop that off, wrap it up, take the, the top and the bottom off and it would all fit nicely into a suitcase and you to reassemble at your location. Um, there's one idea for you. I actually came across a video that I recorded in my grandfather's or my uh, father-in-law's workshop when I was originally playing with this. Maybe I'll dig that up and throw that in the video just for fun. See me when I was a few years younger. All right, now I've got a rough cut of my uh, top contour. I'm gonna take it over onto the belt sander and smooth out all the edges. So in version 2.0 of my travel guitar adventures, I created this little baby body of a kind of a Les Paul style guitar. Same kind of procedure. I used stock wood from Home Depot, two layers glued up and a, um, a channel for the electronics was just an end pin jack, no volume or tone controls or anything like that. I used a tunematic style bridge. In fact, the posts are still in here and a single humbucker pickup. And um, with this guitar, I figured out a better way to attach the neck using hanger bolts. And uh, you can see the holes that are in the body here. Um, the way that the hanger bolts are, which I'll show you on my other guitar, is that instead of a screw going through the back plate into the neck, you use a hanger bolt, which is on one end, it's a wood screw. On the other end, it's a threaded bolt. 
and it uh, I use the wood screw ends to screw into the back of the neck into the bottom of the neck and then the threaded bolts go through the body of the guitar and then are screwed on uh, have thumb screws to tighten the neck to the body on the back side so it does leave uh, little uh, thumb bolts sticking out a little bit but it wasn't nearly as bad as the big cranker that I had on the first round of stuff and so now we come to version 3.0 of the travel guitar which is the steel stick essentially um, I decided to go with an ultra minimalist design for this one using a strap instead of the wood top and bottom contours just to make it even smaller and easier to pack away and I decided to go with the steel plate here, um, just with the absolute minimalist dimensions to get the uh, scale length of the guitar strings from the bridge to the nut, and also cut out a big hole here in the center uh, to reduce some of the weight from it. So I got pretty good using an angle grinder and cutting out steel plate, and I don't remember the actual gauge of the steel, but it is almost like a quarter inch thick. Um, it's pretty pretty thick, pretty heavy, but the overall weight of the guitar is, is nice and light. It's pretty easy to do. Here's the um, example of the carriage bolts that are screwed into the neck, but then have a threaded nut that comes through on the back. And that's how the neck is attached to the body. Now, the other fun parts of this were taking the dimensions needed to get the right you know, height of the bridge to match the neck bolted straight to a steel body. And so back here on the bridge itself, I'm knocking things around, um, I used steel or, or aluminum tubing with just some long screws and nuts <clears throat> and, until I got the right height of the bridge and then could adjust the uh, bridge height uh, individually to make the action the way that I want it. So it plays pretty nicely, it's easy to set up. I got a single humbucker here that is also mounted up, elevated a little bit with tiny little, uh, essentially just big thick washers uh, made out of steel to aluminum tubing too. And then for the electronics to simplify things even more since this is a travel guitar and I'm just probably gonna be listening out, uh, playing with headphones, is that I got one of these uh, headphone amplifiers, classic rock, this is a Donner version. I think these run for about um, 20, 30 bucks. I can get them on Amazon. And they come with, uh, it actually had like a plug sticking out of it that would plug into the jack of a standard guitar. That's how they make them. Um, I did have a quarter inch jack mounted in the back of this, but after it was hanging on the back of them for a while, it actually broke the casing off of the, this. And so I figured, you know, while I've got it and I'm just going to be using it with with this travel guitar, why not wire the pickup directly to the the hot and the ground lead of the um, of the headphone amplifier here? And then I figured, well, gosh, now it's just like a preamp built into the guitar, so all the effects are in here with a volume control, so I can play this. Uh, this has a a, a chargeable uh, battery in here, and it's not charged up right now, I don't think, uh, by a USB cord. Uh, and then you just plug your headphones directly into it, and you've got uh, uh, you've got a tone uh, control, a volume control, and a gain control. Um, now, with a specialized cable, um, and uh, I've I've bought these on Amazon before, a, a three eighths inch like headphone jack to a mono a quarter inch jack, you could actually plug this into an amp and play through an amp too. Um, anyway. Uh, that is the brilliance of this. Now, in terms of the strap, I wanted to be ultra minimalist. So I didn't want to have to deal with even strap knobs, strap buttons, things like that. In the metal design, I cut this tab out and then drilled some holes in it and created enough space for a one inch nylon strap that is just threaded through there. And then the end of the strap is melted to give it uh, enough of a, a thick enough resistance to keep it in this in the slot. So the strap you can't take off, it's on it all the time. Um, the fun part of this uh, little guitar too is that uh, when I'm not traveling with it, and, and, and I, I'm gonna show a video of the deconstruction and putting it away into just a small carrying case that's the size of a, uh, it's like an actual microphone stand bag that I got. Um, but uh, when I'm not traveling with it, 
I decided it would be fun to have this at my office uh, as just kind of uh, something I can play on every now and then. And I built a mounting stand for it. So it's actually this little guy with two of these openings in this 90 degree bracket. I can take off two of the thumb screws of the neck mounters mount like this. And I can actually have this sitting by my standing desk, walk up and play a little bit anytime that I want to. And it's a fun conversation piece for the office. I also got this little uh, plug-in uh, battery powered um, Hodad amp. That's really not worth discussing. It sounds like crap. I made my own um, quarter inch to uh, stereo jack there for the headphone amplifier. <laughs> Okay, so here's the stowaway capacity of this size of the guitar. This is a standard Stand Pro bag uh, that I got that's uh, designed for a microphone stand. And lo and behold, it is just the perfect size for this guitar by itself, even fully assembled. You can pop it in here just like that. And this makes a perfect carry-on by itself. So with the uh, federal regulations regarding carrying a guitar, um, you know, even if they, they can't give you the, the gripe about the dimensions of it being too long, and you're definitely going to find space in an overhead bin, even that's loaded with like three other bags, you can stick this right in the corner with it. So that's really simple. But then if you want to go through the process of disassembling it even more to make it smaller, I've got a couple of uh, Velcro straps that are, after I've, I've loosened up the strings just a little bit, I got a couple of Velcro straps here just to kind of keep the strings in line, mainly at the nut and also down here, closer towards the end of the nut, neck, but this is where you don't want things flying out of. And then just by loosening up the thumb screws. Ah, not dropping them and not losing them. Um, Always a good idea to put the thumb screws back on the screws when it's in the package so that you don't lose it again. But I'm, for save time, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to drop two of them. But then simple, detach the neck. And then the base, without twisting or disorienting the strings, kind of easier to pop the body into the bag first and then without kinking the strings you can slide in the neck next to it zip it up and now you've gained even that much more space for a smaller package that actually this will fit in the diagonal of an overhead carry-on luggage piece. There you have it now. Reassembly. Nut comes out first, keeping the same orientation of the strings. Slide out the body. Get the strap out of the way. Simply flex the carriage bolts right back into the neck. There, the first time you put it with a little bit of string tension, you get a little gap between the um, the end uh, bolts and the near bolts. So actually, throwing the thumb screws on the bolts closer to the bridge first, just to hold it in place, is the easiest way to do it. And then you can finger tighten it as much as you can. But then 
I grabbed the bolts I dropped. For the bolts that are closer to the headstock, as you flex against the tension of the strings, that'll flatten out the neck and get your neck approximated where it needs to be. And um, I've always been able to do this just with finger tightening with these finger, finger screws, which are pretty nifty. A little another flex against the strings and you tighten up the bolts again, then down at the base again, down at the base again. Strings are lined up in the nut and on the bridge. And then all you gotta do is tune up and go. There you go. Hey, thanks for watching uh, another edition of The Fine Line Between Stupid and Clever. Hopefully I gave you a good idea. Know your rights. You may not need a travel guitar as long as you're just following the kind of basic rules. Um, don't really care if you subscribe or not. Uh, if you leave a comment, please be nice for crying out loud. Anyway, uh, cheers and see you next time.